All right, guys, so this has been about eight hours of work. I was really hoping to get it running and driving, but disaster struck. This cheap garbage transmission that I was getting ready to mount, I was putting it back together and couldn't get it to turn. There's no instructions that come with it, of course. And so I grabbed the tip here and it just broke right off. So I can't put a drive shaft on it. So we're out of luck today. This is as far as we're going to get. Um, it was going to go round about here, depending on drive shaft length. Um, I've got plans to use an RC four wheel drive radio box here to put receiver in. And I'll probably just have the ESC next to it and the battery on this side or vice versa. But uh, keep everything out of the interior. As you saw, I got some, made some progress on the interior, but let's go over what all we did on the suspension first. So up front, I've reconfigured leaf springs a couple times. What we've got, it, it gets a little bit of cushion and then it hits back here and then it's all on the leaf springs. I'm gonna try to run this without shocks because I think it's gonna look cool because it's going to be all swishy, leaning back and forth, and even though it's pretty low, it's still going to going to lean a little bit. But my front uh, leaf spring mounts are bruiser shackles, and we've bolted those to the metal floor of the Tonka, and mounted the leaf springs that way. The rear has TF2 shackles mounted to rod ends, and uh, gives us a fair amount of movement. Now, I, I narrowed the axle. I don't know exactly how much, but it does allow and plenty of steering so we don't have to worry about that um, I use Delanda 2 uh, servo mounts and they fit it just happened that the axle was narrowed exactly the same amount and it lined up perfect here so the servo is offset a little bit and use RC four wheel drive rod ends and links to uh, make the steering all work and these are Tamiya semi truck 1.7's um, I think I would like to put some of the uh, dually wheels on it like on the rat rod back there the white ones but uh for right now this is all we got um but yeah the servos on the axle so it, it's not going to have any bump steer or anything weird like that narrowing the axle i just used some of my half inch square tubing i cut down this is an entity axle it's not a drop axle like i use on the rat rods so it was only like 15 bucks or so on ebay and uh yeah so no loss there cut probably at least half an inch, three quarter of an inch out of it, and then slid the ends into the square tubing, drilled two holes for each side, and bolted it back together. Holds up fine. I've done that on several other builds to widen or narrow the axles. Um, yeah, up front, I'm pretty happy with it. I used some aluminum angle, existing holes where rivets were. A home hardware kit came in handy. I used some of these larger, they're probably M5 hardware, but uh. Yeah, bolted it to the chassis that way. Bolted the front hangers to the chassis that way as well, of the body. So moving around back, I did a similar setup um, for the front leaf spring hangers. These are some parts off to me of semi trucks. I've got a bunch of that stuff laying around, and it was good to finally use them. Worked out pretty well. <clears throat> um, it does get a little bit of crazy here with the flex, but I added a couple extra leaf springs back here as well. And it gives a little bit of rake, and I'm hoping once I get the trailer on with a load on it, that it will set nice and level. Um, similar setup, used a piece of aluminum angle bolted to the chassis with some longer RC four-wheel drive rod ends that are offset a little bit, so we get our, our rake. We can adjust the ride height pretty easily. We can add shims under here to lower it, or we can add move these up in the back, or we can space those out. Lots of options to keep this simple. That's, that's one thing, I, I didn't want to overcomplicate this. I didn't want to have to try to make a whole chassis and try to weld this thing because it's it's old hard steel and that new steel, it, they don't really go together that well. I've done a few things like that, but um, to me a semi-truck axle. And again, the tires and wheels, 1.7s. And um, yeah, it gives it a, it's a lot stiffer in the back. I added double small leafs medium leaf, long leaf, and then the actual leaf. So we've got four leaves in there, plus the main leaf. And uh, I think that's gonna work. I may have to stiffen the front up a little more. We'll just have to see once we get everything in. And uh, yeah, so I was, <laughs> I'm really disappointed. That that transmission is frustrating. I bought that on, on eBay. I've had that for this for a couple months. 
But, uh, you know, stuff happens, I guess. Buy cheap stuff, get cheap prizes. So, uh, yeah, let's flip this thing over and take a I look at it. I think the stance is spot on. Once we hang a trailer on the back, it should just have very little bit of rake. Um, I think it's going to be neat being so uh, wobbly. But, again, we can add leaf springs as needed to try and stiffen it up. Um, if the rear has too much sway, I may have to redo my uh, shackle hangers because those using those rod ends, they have the ball socket and they provide a little more side-to-side -side movement than I'd like. So we might have to make a solid piece to fit in there and that would eliminate some of the sway. But I think it's going to be all right with the weight. Now, uh, looking at the inside here, when I cut these holes in this chest or in this tub, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, I was thinking air ride, and I made them a little bit larger than I needed to, especially in the rear, but um, worked the way around it, and the way it sits now, the interior was able to work. So let me show you what I did to the interior. With the design of the interior, we have these uh, bench seats in the back, and that allowed me to clearance the outer section of it without getting into the interior, and it gives the perfect amount of space, even at full squat, to have the tires move without hitting anything. The suspension, it can lean without hitting anything. And it uh, worked out perfectly. Up front, wasn't quite as easy, but I took about a half inch out of this section here and I cut the driver's seats, the, the whole floor and everything out. You saw me, I made a aluminum, or sheet metal, I'm sorry. I made a sheet metal filler piece for in here. And uh, I moved that whole section up about a quarter inch. And I hit it with the carpet. <laughs> It's not quite the right shade of green, but it's a Winnebago, so who cares? And I made some floor mats and stuff for it, but I don't know if we'll keep that or not. But I wanted to keep the full interior in this thing. And uh, I've trimmed quite a bit up here up front. There was a flat piece that went across here. Um, the seats still swivel just like they're supposed to. They're mounted just like they're supposed to. I used some pop rivets. And if you notice, everything I did on the underside of the Winnebago, I put the smooth side on the inside. So the screw and the nut are on the bottom. And then same down here, I popped the rivets long ways here, but over here I got the smooth side down. And that is so the interior will still fit nice and flush on the metal floor and it won't have any fitment issues. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this interior in and we'll kind of piece it back together for now since we gotta wait on a new transmission. So it all fits in just like it's supposed to. The edges at the top fit underneath the metal lip and we've still got our suspension <laughs> still rolls we still have full steering the steering probably will hit the inside of the fender so we'll might have to set some limits on that but uh it's kind of a ground pounder <laughs> so i figure with the weight of the trailer it'll probably squat to about there and be just a, not quite level be just up a little bit in the rear I hope because that's the that's the look I'm going for ideally I would have liked to narrow the rear a little bit but the I mean these these stock semi truck wheels have the least amount of positive offset um, if you've ever seen these Winnebago's they have a horrible amount of, of negative offset the tires tuck way in just like the front does on this but uh, there wasn't anything you could do with the, that that's the narrowest axle that I could find that would work the narrowest wheel combo that I could find that would work. I have some RC four-wheel drive aluminum 155s and they have a horrible amount of positive offset and they wouldn't even fit underneath this body in the rear. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we've got our interior. We've got everything. We just need a transmission mounted, get electronics in, and take it for a test spin. My trailer is supposed to be here. Oh... Tuesday, I think, day after my birthday. So, I think I've, then we can work on the trailer hitch, and then we can hopefully pull some rat rods around and get some video of that. But uh, yeah, let me get you some better angles of this because I think it looks pretty dang cool. So I, I'm kind of tired. I've been out here all day working on this, but I am pretty excited about this. I'm stoked that the interior worked out. I had no plan for for that, and it just all kind of fell into place. Um, steering still works. Everything is is working out great, and I really can't wait to drag some rat rods around with this. 
Uh, the trailer I'm getting, I think, was uh, Team Raff. Team Raffy, however you say it. Um, it's the cheapest one. I, I seen them at the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo. RC Addict was out there selling some stuff. And uh, I should have bought it then because then I could have done the hitch now and we could have seen it. But I ended up buying it online. So, uh, yeah, got away. I was, just wasn't sure what I was going to do it, use it for yet. And then I finally got inspired on this thing to uh, make it happen. I think it was back mid-December when I first got this and chopped the floor out and I ordered the transmission and uh, the tires and wheels and stuff like that. And so it's been a while in the works. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to be cool. Um, looking forward to kind of ratting it out a little bit. Uh, it's got the perfect patina. The, there's enough of the original paint I'm happy with. Um, I think the white semi wheels might look better on it let me know what y'all think also there are some 3d printed stuff for this on shapeways uh, it's hoy fab on shapeways he makes mirrors grill rear ladder a um, bunch of little odds and ends for this thing so might check into that i'm thinking the grill for sure because the sticker on mine is pretty sad shape but i don't know i need to do some research on it and see what uh how it all fits and how it mounts and everything before I take the leap, but uh, yeah, I think that might be cool to do some more detail to it. Um, I do have the roof for it, and the, the canopy and everything, all the levers work, so um, I may change out the headlights. I do have, because I used to restore the vintage Tonka trucks, if you haven't seen my other channel, check it out, it's called Chop Toys. Um, I have tons of vintage Tonka parts, so I've got lights to replace that, I've got uh, that style of headlight, and and things like that that we can swap out. I think I even have some tail lights because this does have yeah the tail lights on this are completely faded out. But uh, let me flip it around. Oh. This thing's just so heavy. It's it's neat. I think that's gonna make it actually pretty cool if it'll stop rolling. <laughs> so you can see the tail lights are pretty faded out. But uh, yeah, this thing's it's coming together. I uh, appreciate everybody being patient with me getting to it. It's been a few months, so. Any suggestions for the interior, scale accessories, stuff like that? Comment below and uh, keep a scale. I appreciate everybody watching. Be sure to check me out on Instagram for sneak peeks and stuff like that. And uh, Facebook, RC Every Day. I'll see you on the next video.